Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to the Card Fight Empire channel. Um, I know a lot of you guys, I feel like I'm making this like every video now, but I promise after this video that I won't touch anything else with my computer like pretty much ever again. Um, basically, what happened is like um, I know we were on GPT 12 when I was doing videos last time, and my computer actually broke. I posted about this if you. Um, are part of the discord or the Facebook uh, page. I did post about this like trying to find a solution um, for like a lot of days um, and I wasn't able to really come up with anything but basically what happened was I updated my MacBook to the new OS um, High Sierra and then it caused my um, card fight area to do this weird blinking thing where the entire thing was blinking red. So if you guys can look at my card fight area prompt or over here on the left, um, you'll see like the sides have the, a red bar and it was like that, that color red, but my whole screen was just blinking whenever I opened card fight area. So I, um, I assume that it's due to the new update of the Mac OS because it wasn't happening like that before, obviously. Um, but I literally updated my OS and then I opened Card Fight Area and that happened. So in my attempts to try to fix this, um, I went through this really long process where I tried to restore my computer um, through a backup to the previous version of OS that it had been. And then that ended up restoring my system wrong. And then my backup also got corrupted in the process. So I lost all my data from three years ago on my computer to now. So literally it has been a real pain in the butt for the last few days. Um, I really wanted to say something else there, but yeah, it's been a real pain in the butt um, to try to deal with for the last two weeks, trying to basically restore everything that I lost. Um, I wasn't able to restore everything because obviously like I'm kind of a hoarder type personality. Um, so I will keep a lot of things on my computer in case I need them in the future. Um, and I don't even know what those things were that I lost. So all I know is that I lost like somewhere near, I don't know, 400 gigabytes of information. So I was able to re-download all my um, programs. Um, there were some things that are easier than others. I had Google Chrome, so Google Chrome saved my downloads, my previous downloads and my previous like site history and stuff like that. So that made like bookmarks and stuff really easy and also like finding my applications through there really easy. Um, so I was able to re-download all the base, um, base level programs I have and stuff like that. But yeah, basically that's where I've been. I've just been trying to rebuild everything from scratch. I just um, had to basically wipe my entire computer and restore everything from scratch. But um, when I restored to the old OS and then I redid everything from scratch, I opened my card fight area and it gave me this error that was saying that um, it was running into an unknown error when it was opening card fight area. So it wouldn't even let me open the card fight area. And as I did research on this, like there was like a lot of solutions for it, but basically the base level solution was you have to update your computer drivers. And for a Windows computer, that's easy. But for a Mac, you can't really update the drivers unless Apple puts out an update. So guess what the update was that Apple put out? Mac OS High Sierra, the thing that like started this whole thing and messed it up. So I had to re-download Mac, uh, Mac OS High Sierra. Uh, excuse my dog that's barking outside. It's a crazy dog. But um, yeah, I had to re-download Mac OS High Sierra and then start everything from scratch over again, which was a big pain in the butt. Um, however, this time when I opened Card Fight Area, um, after trying a lot of times, I was able to get it to a state where only the sides would blink red. And then if I resize it, like I did here, um, if I resize it and then, or sorry, if I shrink it and then I resize it back to the full screen, um, where it is right now, it only has the red on the side. So into, um, since it's, since everything's working functionally with area, um, I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'm just going to leave it the way it is until some kind of new update comes out to fix this because I assume that the update that will come out to fix this is either on one side so it's um it's something between how Mac uh, OS High Sierra and wine uh, the interface work with each other 
So um, I would just wait for Wine to put out an update. Um, until then, I will play with these red bars on the side of my screen. Uh, it's not really a big of a deal as long as I can bring you guys more content and more videos. So I'm thankful that I can at least make videos again. Um, so yeah, with that being said, let's pick right up off of the um, where we were before with our Future Fight series. So today we're going to be talking about the GBT-12 Chrono Jet Zodiac Time Beast deck. Um, so we are a little bit behind, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. Like, there's been a lot of things that have come out and been revealed uh, since then. I was going to make a video talking about Dust, but um, I don't need to anymore because it's been errated. So that was a huge release, or, or a huge relief, because that card was really unhealthy for the game the way that it was um, pre errata So I'm really glad that Bushiroad fixed that. Um, we definitely did not need that being given to... Gear Chronicle, Pale Moon, Dark Irregular, and Spike Brothers. Like, that was ridiculous. Like, no clan in the game should get that, but let alone them. So, um, but yeah, so let's talk about one of those Dark Zone clans while we're at it. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Zodiac Time Beast GBC 12 Chrono Jet deck, like I said before. Um, and with that being said, um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention. Oh, yeah. Happy holidays, guys. Um, I haven't been able to say that to most of you. We are now past Christmas, so um, Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate it. Happy Hanukkah. Um, and if you guys don't celebrate the holidays, I hope you're just enjoying your holiday season. Um, a lot of you get time from work off and stuff like that, even if you don't celebrate the holiday. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys are all enjoying yourselves. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be right here um, back on regular schedule. We're headed to Worlds in two to three weeks, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, there will also be a vlog that I'll be doing. Um, I'm going with a couple friends, uh, so we'll we'll see who makes the vlog and who doesn't. <laughs> and um, yeah, so you guys just stay tuned for that. Um, and thank you to my Patreons for staying so loyal and staying so patient with me while I fixed all these issues. Um, could have done anything else, but all of you were just super supportive. And even, like, people who are not my patrons, who are just my subscribers, who just been messaging out saying, like, oh, you know, um, just wondering when the video is going to come, being really patient, um, and also just offering advice and trying to help me do research on how to fix my own problem. So I appreciate that really deeply, you guys, and I just wanted to take a moment to say that. But, um, yeah, so let's flip over our... G zone here as usual. Um, all right, so the Zodiac Time Beast deck is a pretty aggressive deck, um, from especially from GBT 12 because you get access to um, the new Restander that Gears got, which is a Chrono Dragon Gear Next. Um, it allows for you to make a lot of good push turns uh, with it. It's not a bad deck at all. Like I really really like it. Um, so, starting off with our grade 3s, we do run 7 grade 3s, uh, we run 4 Chrono Jet Dragon G, this is our main grade 3 that we want to be on. Um, it is a Gear Dragon, which matters in this deck, and it is a Zodiac Time Beast as well, which also matters. Um, it has two abilities, the first ability is Continuous Vanguard skill. Uh, during your turn, for every two face-up cards in your G-Zone, this unit gets plus 5,000 power and gives all of your Zodiac Time Beast regard 1k power. So this does stack, so if you have four face-up cards in the G-Zone, this card will get 10k and all your regards will get 2k that are Zodiac Time Beast. So um, pretty much every card in this deck is a Zodiac Time Beast card, so you never have to really worry about a card being Zodiac Time Beast or not. Um, so yeah, it just powers up your field. It's very nice, um, especially after you go into like next stage or something like that, um, and then you revert back down to Chrono Jet G for your next attack. It does make your rear guard column swing for really big, um, so that is a big plus. Um, then it has a time leap skill uh, on stride. Uh, during your turn, when you stride into a Gear Dragon or a Zodiac Time Beast stride, you get to choose a card from your hand, um, up to one card. So you don't have to call a card; you can if you wish. Um, then you choose a rear guard and you time leap it, which basically uh, you time leap and time leap is uh, the 
Gear Chronicle keyword where you move any unit um, to the bind zone and then you select one unit from your deck that has plus one grade to that unit and then you call it to the field. So let's say that I time leaped a grade two, I can now get a grade three from my deck and play it to the rearguard circle. Um, so it's pretty cool. And then at the end of the turn, uh, the grade three that I called would go back to the bottom and then my grade two would come back out of the bind zone. So it like reverts itself back to what it was. Um, yeah, so basically just helps you set up your fields to the on stride skill, like pretty standard. Um, then we run three replenish total. This was one of the cards we talked about in the GBT 11 um, ZTB deck, which it that's when it came out. Um, this card is really, really good. Keeps you from ever being out of resources as far as your counter boss. Um, when this unit is placed on rear guard from your deck, if you have a Zodiac Time Beast Vanguard, and this unit gets plus 3,000 power. And then um, if you have no face-up cards in your damage zone, then you can counter charge one. So like, let's say that turns that you have like five counter boss flip down and you want a next stage, you just play down to grade two, time leap it into replenish total, and then you're suddenly fine. Um, and then you can unflip one and be, you know, be peachy. Uh, it also gets 3k, which helps when you have a 7k booster to make 21. Uh, but that's kind of like, that's less important than the counter charge reason, which is why we run it. It's also Zodiac Time Beast, which matters. Um, going into our grade two lineup, we do run um, 13 grade twos. This is because we want to rush, 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 rush our opponent um, into the ground, basically. Uh, it is very important to be aggressive in this deck as that is how it pulls off its wins because all of its strides and pressure cards they work best when your opponent's at high damage, so you want to definitely rush the crap out of them. Um, so we have a Force, a Spearhead Unicorn. This card came out in the GBT-12 set. Um, this card allows you for multi-attacks, or it allows you to just like fill spaces on your board. Uh, what it does is Generation Break 1, if you have a Vanguard with Chrono Jet in its name, uh, this unit gets 2,000 power and a skill that says when it attacks a Vanguard, you can counter boss one. And you look at this uh, top number of cards from your deck as the same number of Zodiac Time Beast units that you have on the board. So if you have a full field, you can look at six cards from the top of your deck and call one to a rear guard circle. So um, a lot of times what I like to do is I like to attack with one column, then attack with Spearhead Unicorn, then call over the card that I just attacked with so that I get an extra attack. Um, it kind of like makes it so that you don't have to run stand triggers in this deck if you really don't want to, which um, I didn't want to in this particular build. Um, so it makes you really able to uh, run some other triggers and also get multi-attacks without stand triggers, so it's really good. Um, then we have a four uh, Pulsar Wine Tiger. This card came out of GBT 11 as well. Um, it is the Zodiac Time Beast 8K. Uh, the reason why we run this at four is because we want to see it in the early game as much as possible. Like we always want to have one of these in our hand in the early game because it's just so much of a um, plus in my opinion. Like when this unit's placed on rear guard, you kind of boss one and you choose one of your other rear guards so that Zodiac Time Beast and rest it. And then if you do, you bind the top card of your deck. If the card that you bound is Zodiac Time Beast, you get to draw a card and it's 2000 power. So not only does it become a 10K attacker on your grade two turn, you get to draw a card just for placing it, which is a plus one. So it's very, very good. Um, then we have three Duplex Dragon. Uh, Duplex Dragon is a little bit of a control variant to add to our Z ZTB deck and it came out in GBT 12. So this helps us uh, just get rid of our opponent's starters and stuff like that. It is not G-Break, which is very awesome. Uh, we do have to be grade three though. So if we go first riding to grade three, um, we are able to get rid of our opponent's starter before they get to stride. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and its skill is when it's placed on the rear guard, if we have a grade three or greater Zodiac Time Beast Vanguard, we can Soul Blast one and then bind the top card of our deck. And then we choose one of our opponent's rear guards with grade less than or equal to um, the grade that we bound, and then our opponent puts that unit on the bottom of their deck. So no matter what we bind from the top, we will be able to get their starter. However, if you do want to get rid of something else and you do bind something that is equal or more grade than the unit you want to get rid of, then you can just get rid of that as well. So Duplex Dragon is a very, very strong early game card. Um, it's also strong for when you just have plays where you want to uh, prevent your opponent from doing defensive plays against you, if that makes sense. Like, so against like Eradicators, um, against uh, Kagero, if they have the stand, if they play the stand trigger that gives them 10k, um, against the Gear Chronicle Mirror match, if they run Bangalore Gear Cat, there's like a lot of uses to it. So it's pretty cool. Then we run two Cruising Dragon. 
Um, I really don't see a need to run much more than two in this deck. Um, it is kind of counterblast heavy, and you would rather use your counterblast for uh, Spearhead Unicorn uh, if you're really gonna, you know, go through counterblast like that. But uh, this card does help you for pluses, so it's pretty good in that respect. Uh, it did come out in GBT 11, and its skill is Generation Break 1. During your turn, if you have a Vanguard with Chrono Jet in its name, this unit gets plus 2,000 power and a skill. This says when it attacks the Vanguard, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal one Zodiac Time Beast, and put it into your hand and put the rest on the bottom. So um, I like a lot of the effects that like call cards or search cards to your hand, and then they put the rest on the bottom, because what that does is that actually allows you to stack your deck out. So since you're not shuffling, if you have a low deck count, like you'll know what will be on the bottom of your deck and you'll be able to stack triggers in a sort of way. So it's pretty cool. Um, also, this card just adds a free card to your hand. So it's very awesome. Um, and considering that all your stride fodder, your grade threes, your PGs um, are also daytime beasts, you can search any one of these, like if they're in the top three cards. So it's very good. Um, we have our Zodiac Time Beast Stride Fighter Revolver Draco Kid um, at 4. So it's, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. We run it because we want to stride a lot, like this is a stride deck. Um, and we want to have as many chances to stride as possible, so we never want to be caught without a proper stride fighter in our hand, like striding with just one card. So it also is able to search us out Chrono Jet um, if we, for some reason, start the game with uh, Replenish Kotal and a Revolver Draco Kid in our hand then we can just play the Revolver Draco Kid on Rearguard and then we can use it to search out our Chrono Jet G before we have to ride Grade 3. So pretty great. Um, for our PGs we run 4 Steam Tamer Arca. Um, Arca is... for some reason I wanted to say Arker or like Marker or something like that. But yeah, um, Arca um, is a Zodiac Time Beast um, PG so that's great. Uh, it allows it to be searched out by cruising if it's there, it allows you to um, use it for Chrono Jet G if you want to play it to the rear guard circle. Uh, there's a lot of good uses to it, but uh, its main thing is that it can PG. Um, something important to note is that it can PG any unit, not just Vanguard. So if you're playing against like D Police and they attack into your rear guard with Laurel, you can PG your rear guard. So that's pretty awesome. And also, it has a skill that's Generation Break 2. That says when you have two Arcas in the drop zone and a Zodiac Time Beast trigger, you can bind one Arca and bind one Zodiac Time Beast trigger, and then you can bounce one Arca from your drop zone to your hand. So that makes it pretty awesome because it makes you able to recover your PGs um, so that you can use your PGs up to six times, I believe, per game. Um, if you use the skill, sorry, it's seven times. So yeah, because you can use all four PGs and then get two back and then get one back. So uh, you can use a maximum of seven PGs, uh, or your PGs seven times in this deck, um, assuming that you don't damage them or whatever. Uh, then we have four Pulsar Transit Dragon. Uh, this card is very, very good. It allows you to build soul um, for stuff like Duplex and uh, Chrono Gear Dragon next, and uh, your GB8 and head around stuff like that like there's quite a few things that you soul in this deck also Hegardo over here um, so it allows you to build soul and draw cards at the same time which is always good like we'll never you know turn that down um, it's just free pluses like and it gets used after it boosts so basically it's done its part after um, it boosts and then it goes away you draw a card it goes into the soul um, so then we run one Pulsar Tamer Hegardo. Uh, Hegardo has two skills. It is uh, one of our new cards from GBT12. It kind of reminds me of Takeaway Dragon, except it's just not as good as Takeaway Dragon in my opinion. However, Takeaway Dragon doesn't really fit in this deck. That's why we're not running it. Um, and then, so this card has two skills. So the first skill is a continuous skill that says if we have a grade four Vanguard, this unit gets an ability that says act Soul Blast one and put this unit on the bottom of your deck. Then you get to choose any card from your drop zone, put it on the bottom of your deck, and counter charge one. See, the reason that this skill is so important is you can use it to return triggers to your deck, and you can also counter charge. Um, so even though it is a minus to use it, um, it is worth it in the end, um, I, in my opinion, to do it. Uh, also, it has a Generation Break 1 ability that says when it's placed on Rigor, you can Soul Charge 1, and that makes it never useless to be able to use the first skill, because when you place it on Rigor Circle, when it comes from anywhere, like, it will have to get placed, and in order for it to be placed, you can Soul Charge 1, and then you will always have the Soul to Soul Blast out for its ability, which is pretty solid. Our starter is Chrono Dran. 
Um, what Chrono Duran does is it has been run as the Gear Chronicle starter pretty much for as long as I can remember. It's just too good. Um, it has Forerunner, which means it can move back when it's ridden upon, like most starters in this game. And then also, it has an ability that says when this unit is put into the Bind Zone from Rear Guard, you can put into your soul, then search a Grade 3 Chrono Jet, um, a Grade 3 or greater Chrono Jet card, call it to Rear Guard, and then at the end of the turn, that Chrono Jet gets bounced to the hand. So it allows you some offensive pressure in the form of calling a Chrono Jet, and then at the end of the turn, if nothing happens to that Chrono Jet, like, doesn't get to Nile Griffin by Kagura or anything like that. You can just bounce it to your hand and have a free stride fodder um, for the next turn. So it's very solid, goes into your soul, builds your soul, works well with time leap because that's how you get it off by time leaping it away. Um, so it's just overall a great card. Like there's no better starter that you can run in my opinion. Um, then we, for our triggers, we have um, eight Zodiac Time Beast crit triggers. Uh, we do run four of the Pulsar Thruster Bison as one of our crit triggers which has an ability. Um, it did come out this set and it's basically a Margo clone. So we're able to shove our um, Bison into soul whenever we need soul or whenever we need to give a unit power and it gives 3k power to something. So that's pretty solid. Uh, we run Chronovali Rabbit, which is just a vanilla. We do run draw triggers instead of stands. Um, I like draw triggers better because they help like filter out my hand um, and filter out my deck, get my deck really low so that I can use the stacking abilities um, of the Zodiac Time Beast cards really effectively. Um, and then also you can just put back cards with Higardo, so it makes Higardo like worth it later because since Higardo is a minus, like if you check a draw trigger to do it and then you put like a draw trigger or a heal or a crit back or something, I think it's like very productive of a play. Um, so yeah, four Zodiac Time Beast draws, uh, Vickle Monkey, and then we do run um, Time Carving Maiden Urlu as our heal trigger. The reason why I'm not running like a ZTB heal is because it didn't really matter to me to run a ZTB heal. I don't want to ever bind my heals with um, Arca skill because I can just return my heals to my deck with Hagardo. So I'd rather all my heals be there um, in the deck if I can so that I can keep myself at low damage or keep healing on my opponent if they keep putting me to high damage so that I'm never really truly in danger, so to speak. Um, and also when we G-Guard with the new Urlu, which we do run in this deck, the new G-Guard Urlu, uh, when we G-Guard with it, it allows us to return a card from our drop zone to the bottom of the deck, which is pretty good um, in not decking out and making sure that your plays are instrumental um, and productive towards your win. Um, but yeah, moving on to our stride zone. Um, yeah, our G-Zone. So we have for Chrono Jet Dragon Gear Next. Uh, this is our new card from GBC 12. This card is absolutely amazing and pretty much carries the deck on its own in my opinion. Um, it allows for, it's the first Chrono Jet like based restander that doesn't go back down to uh, the grade three. So it allows you to actually stack triggers on it and it matters when it restands because it keeps the trigger effects. So um, it's very good in that respect. And you also get to put cards back to your deck instead of discarding them. So um, it prevents deck out, and then also you can return triggers back from your hand to your deck. So it's very, very good. I'm going to read its skill here. Uh, you activate it in the main phase so that you can activate its effect. You soul blast one, and you choose a card with the same name as it, and you turn it face up in your G zone, which means that you flip a gear next. And then this unit gets an auto ability that says at the end of the battle that this unit attacked if you have a gear dragon heart card, which is why I said that it matters to have a gear dragon heart card, which is Chrono Jet G. Because if you're on Replenish Kotal, it's not a Gear Dragon, so you won't be able to Gear next. You will only be able to do something else. Uh, because Replenish Kotal is a Gear Beast and not a Gear Dragon. Um, so yeah, for um, you get the skill that says if you have a Gear Dragon Heart, reveal up to three Zodiac Time Beasts from your hand or rear guard. So that's very important because you can like slam down your rear guards, you can attack with your board, and then you can put cards back and then literally just attack again. So um, it allows you if you don't if you don't have any cards from your hand that you really want to put back, then you can put back cards from your field just as easy. Um, so you can put back three cards from hand or rear guard, and then you put on the bottom. Uh, you stand this unit, and it gets minus two drive. So the very cool thing about this is that it's generation. It has a generation break four ability too. It says during this unit's second battle, it gets plus 10,000 power and plus one drive. So basically, like it makes it five drive checks. So if you attack the first time, it's three drive checks. And then if you restand um, and your GB4, 
which is basically second stride um, then you get two drive checks but however it does make it so that you're able to go into this before generation break four however you will just be getting um, four drive checks so I have quad drive and it can restand um, in the case where you've like rushed your opponent to the point where you think you can kill them like that early um, so we do run four meta pulsar avenir phoenix um, avenir phoenix basically helps you call a board gets you started off right you can run two split pegasus instead of four um, avenir phoenix you can run two phoenix and a two uh, split pegasus if you want to um, i found running uh, for Avenir Phoenix to just be good because against decks that control you, you can just go into double Avenir Phoenix and to get your board back, and it's not like a bad play or anything like that. And then against like things that lock out your regards, it's the opposite where you go into gear next and um, next stage to try to you know fizzle out your opponent so that uh, you're, you're still putting the same amount of pressure on them or a greater amount of pressure without rear guards uh, because you have a restanding vanguard so that's pretty awesome um, so Avenir Phoenix skill is when it attacks counter boss one and choose a face down card with the G zone same name uh, as this unit turn to face up so you basically counter boss one and flip Avenir Phoenix and then you reveal five cards from the top of your deck and for each card face up in your G zone you can call two Zodiac time beasts and then um, put the rest on the bottom. So this is another one of those abilities I was talking about that puts cards on the bottom and just you know s starts stacking your deck. However, if you do time leap a lot with Chrono Jet G, like that is the way to shuffle. So um, it will shuffle your deck if you do time leaps. So it has a Generation Break Three skill as well. Pretty much going into its second stride or after you have G guarded at least once. Um, you can use the skill and it says all of your Zodiac time use rear guards get plus 2,000 power. So it's not bad at all, makes your rear guards a little beefier um, so that they can hit some different numbers. Um, then we have one Meta Pulsar Mystery Freeze Dragon. I almost never use this card, but for some people it comes in clutch and I had space for it. So I figured why not run it just in case. Uh, you can take this out for Sabreeze if you want to. Um, it's not a big deal to have Mystery Freeze, but if you want to have it anyways, you can just keep this build the way that it is. Um, and then it has a Generation Break 1 or Generation Break 3 ability, sorry. Um, that's Counter Boss 2 during the main phase. And then shuffle your deck and bind four cards from the top of your deck. And then until the end of the turn, um, when this unit attacks, your opponent can't guard with cards from hand with the same name as the units that you bound and then if you bound a grade 3 then it gets plus 1 drive. So like let's say that you use the skill and you bind a 0, 1, 2, 3 and a um, yeah 0, 1, 2, 3 um, then you get quad drive and your opponent can't guard with 0's, 1's or 2's. So the only way that they can block this is G guarding which becomes really really amazing in the case where you know that your opponent only has a PG and that will last them um, or when your opponent only has a PG and you know that you have like grade ones in your deck that you will most likely hit. So um, it's a good option to go into then. Then we do run one of the GB8 um, Interdimensional Dragon Beyond Order Dragon. A lot of people think this card is bad. I do not think that this card is bad and it actually does come in handy. Um, it is another restander in your deck technically, but instead of restanding it allows for another battle phase and another main phase which can be really important because you can play more cards and make more attacks. This is another one of those like non-stand trigger things I was talking about is where we don't have to run stand triggers to get a lot of attacks in a turn. Like so we can attack with one, attack with two, attack with beyond order, um, and then beyond order will do its skill and then we can play more rear guards and then attack, uh, attack, attack. So basically the generation break eight skill is activation during the main phase, counter boss one, soul boss one, and bind the top eight cards of your deck. And then after the original battle phase of this turn, so after the first battle phase, you perform an additional main phase and battle phase. And until the end of the turn, this unit gets a skill that says at the beginning of your main phase, stand this unit and it gets plus or it gets minus one drive. Um, and you perform the end phase after the additional phases. So basically the way that your turn will go is stand phase, draw phase, main phase one, this is turning into Yu-Gi-Oh now. So main phase one, battle phase one, main phase two, battle phase two, end phase. Um, so yeah, that is important to keep in mind, guys. Uh, then we do run two Chrono Dragon next stage, um, and just another restander option in this deck. Like, as if we don't have enough, uh, we can always run more. 
And so if we're against like the Link Joker matchup or something, pretty much why we ran this, if we're running into a matchup where they're depleting our rear guards or they're retiring our rear guards or they've locked them or something like that, um, then we can just go into our multiple restanding vanguards uh, to get the job done. And Chrono Dragon next stage also has its ups and downs um, in comparison to Gear Next. Like it doesn't have to uh, choose Zodiac Time Beast cards to put back, but honestly, this whole deck is Zodiac Time Beast. So next stage is more useful when you're not running a full Zodiac Time Beast build. But it's also useful when you're able to go into next stage and then you go back down into Chrono Jet G after that because next stage allows you to um, stand your grade 3 under it while it goes back to the G zone. So you can just stand Chrono Jet G and Chrono Jet G will be huge and make your rear guards huge too. So that's the use for Chrono Jet next stage in this deck. Um, going to our G Guardians, we have one Urlu, one Header Around, and two of the old Urlu. So one of the new Urlu is our G Flip Guardian in this deck. You counter boss one and you flip a G Guardian face up. And then when this unit is placed on rear guard or uh, Guardian Circle, that's when you can activate this. And then if you do, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield for every face up card in your G zone to the end of the battle. So that's pretty great. Um, it allows you to guard really, really big attacks from your opponent that have guard restrict in case you can't PG the attack. Um, or you just need to PG some huge rear guard. Uh, this card can even help you guard against uh, Zoa, which if I was originally making this video, Zoa wouldn't have been out, but um, now that I'm making this when uh, Zoo Nation booster is out and all of that stuff, uh, Zoa is the ultimate stride that gives 99-99-9 power uh, to a rear guard and keeps it like that, and you have to guard it or you die instantly. Um, so this can help you guard things like that where it's just really troublesome, or like Wailing Thavis in GBT-13, stuff like that. Uh, we do run one Hetero Around Dragon. The reason why we run one is because most of our opponents probably wouldn't play with us on area if we ran more than one, because they like to abide by Japanese ban list, which Hetero Around is put to one in Japan. However, it is not put to one in English, so you are able to run multiples if you would like in English. Um, however, Hetero Around like, fails me a lot, and you guys will see that <laughs> in my gameplay. Like, when you, whenever you head around something, like, it could potentially mess up your opponent's play, but it could potentially make them better off, too. Um, and there's a lot of situations where you want to head around, and there's uh, a lot of situations where you don't want to head around as well. So it's just important to pay attention to the board state, pay attention to what's going on, and uh, hope that your opponent doesn't get the same unit or a better unit back when you head around their unit back to the deck. Um, then we run two of the old Urlu G-Guard, our first G-Guard that we ever got, ever, um, in anything in Vanguard. Like, we thought that this card is broken, and it still kind of is. Um, when this unit is placed on Guard Circle, you can choose a normal unit and a trigger unit from your drop zone, put them on the bottom of the deck, and then this unit gets plus 5,000 shield. So it guards for 31, and then it also puts back cards from your drop zone. Doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. But yeah, moving right into the game. waiting for our good old card fight area to open back up so yeah now you guys can see what I'm talking about because you guys can probably see the screen blinking so it's still doing the blinking but it's just doing it on the side if I resize it like I do here it just fixes it temporarily kind of um, until the next time I open or close area so uh, it also does still have the red bars on the side which bothers me but not as much as like the whole screen blinking like it was before. So we are playing against Blasters in this first playtest. Um, our opponent does go first and they ride Sisyllus the Stride Fodder. We ride our own Stride Fodder and we attack for 12. And then we get a heal trigger, um, healing nothing off because we have no damage. He damage checks a critical trigger and rides Lou and attacks us. He does crit us back. Um, we do get a draw trigger and we draw and then we check a crit trigger, not really doing anything. Uh, we ride Spearhead Unicorn, and then we play the um, Rewind Tiger to counter boss one, and we rest the Dran, and we bind a Unicorn, and we draw a card. Um, like I said, we're rushing our opponent super hard because it's super important to rush them, like I said in the deck profile part of uh, this deck. So we are getting into three damage early. 
Um, he does ride exceed and double pop through uh, playing both of his exceeds on the board. He attacks into our rear guard, we guard it, and then he attacks our vanguard and gets a draw trigger, and then we take it. So uh, he does use Wingo Brave to search out a Barkle. Um, we do not have a great three, so unfortunately we have to G assist. And when we G assist, we do not find the Chrono Jet, so um, that's kind of like a bad situation for us, but we decide to just keep pushing forward because we haven't lost by a long shot yet. Um, we do attack for 14, and our opponent no guards, we don't check a trigger, so we're not able to attack with the Tiger, even if we wanted to, and then we just end our turn. Our opponent actually rides uh, Messianic Lord Blaster, which is a pretty cool card. Like, um, They only have it in Japan right now, but uh, yeah, it's not a bad card. The only thing that I don't like about it is that it's grade 4, and it prevents, like, it has some bad synergy with Lian. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty great card. Like, it almost ended me right here because whenever they drive check a card with Blaster Blade in its name, uh, it gets plus one critical. So, yeah, it was it was pretty awkward to guard. Um, but because he was attacking 20 to my 9, like, I'm not going to drop so much shield for that, especially when I'm at 3 damage, so I just no guarded. Uh, the first drive check, he got a Blaster Blade. He used the skill to give it plus one critical. Um, and then he also can call the card that he checks the rear guard circle, which is amazing. And then it gets the power. So um, if I even if I had guarded it, it would have blasted plas uh, past my guard probably. Um, and then here he thinks that he checked something else, which he just wasn't paying attention for a second. Um, and he said that he dazed off or dozed off or something, which I don't know how that's possible if it's like in the middle of your turn. I understand like being bored during your opponent's turn and like dozing off and not understanding what's going on, but I don't know. But he's using the Wingle skill. Um, yeah, so he's using the Wingle skill to look at the top seven. Uh, and then he's trying to add a card with Blaster Blade in his name to hand. He has Exceed and puts the um, Wingle Youth into the soul. Uh, 9k attacks our rear guard. We let the or we guard the Rewind Tiger, um, and then I'm not sure why we guarded and it still died. Oh, I think because I intercepted after that, because I was just like, why would I even keep that? But we do G-Assist again, unfortunately. Uh, this time, fortunately, we do get the Grade 3, so we get rid of two of our cards, our Crit and our Duplex Dragon, and two um, of our Gear next, because uh, we can survive without that in this matchup, pretty much. And we do stride into Metallica Phoenix, or uh, Metallica Phoenix, I wish. Uh, we stride into Avenir Phoenix, and we time loop Chrono Dran into the Grade 1, and we call a Chrono Jet. Uh, then we attack with Avenir Phoenix to his Vanguard. We use the skill to call two cards out. And then we put the rest at the bottom. Um, and then he tries to PG with his PG, but I told him that he cannot do it because Leon has to um, Leon has the perfect shield a grade 3 unit with Alfred or Blaster, not a grade 4. So since he rode Messiah Nick, he kind of screwed himself. Um, so in that case, he decides to G-guard instead. Uh, he G-guards into Marin. Uh, he soul blasts one, and then he calls a grade one or less to the guard circle. So he decides to call a grade one. Uh, since he is 13k base, then this is 28, 33 um, to my 33. Uh, and then one to pass. Uh, three to pass, yeah, because uh, his unit got plus 5,000 power. So I actually do get the three to pass. However, I did not all Vanguard because I didn't think I was going to get it like that. So um, I do attack him, and he guards because he has to because crits are a thing. Crits are dangerous. Then we return our Chrono Jet to hand, and we end our turn. Um, he strides on his side when it comes over to his turn, um, and then he goes into Gancelot. Um, he decides to play the stand trigger from his hand and use the skill, which I don't even think that this stand trigger or any stand trigger should be getting run in blasters. Every time I like watch people run stand triggers and blasters, I'm just like, why? 
But then beyond that, he put the stand trigger back and then he didn't even attack with the rear guard first. So I'm just kind of like, what over here? But uh, he quad drives and gets no triggers. So we're able to just uh, take his rear guard basically. And then we stride for our turn going into gear next. Uh, we time leap our grade one into a unicorn. And then we don't really have any viable cards that we want to play from our hand beyond that. So what we do is we do attack for um, 11. We look at the top three to call the cards of the board. And we put the rest on the bottom. Then we attack for 26. He no guards. Um, and then we check the heal trigger in the process. So we he do heal one damage. And now we have four heals in our hand, which is pretty troll. Like I'm pretty sure we're not dying. But uh, we use the skill to put back three zone eight time these cards, a draw trigger, and two crits. And then we attack for 36. He no guards. Um, we double drive check, and then he six damage heals. Um, so pretty lucky there. And then he guards our 21k assault with his other card. At the end of the turn, our time leap card goes back to the deck, and our grade one comes back. Um, and then for his turn, he rides into Arc Saber Dragon. So he runs a couple of the grade four blaster like related cards. Um, so he uses the skill to counter blast three, and then he soul blast three, and then uh, at the beginning of the main phase, that's what he's doing. He's searching his deck, soul, and damage zone for one card, and then he can call them up to rear guard circle if he chooses to do so. So he, he called one from damage, and then he's calling one from drop, which is a flowable, and then he's choosing to call none from the deck, um, I assume. Or actually, he does choose to call from the deck, and he calls a Bart goal over the Margol, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, maybe not. So he calls an Exceed. Um, yeah, that's awkward. But yeah, he calls an Exceed, um, and I'm guessing so that that's so that he could just attack 11. Um, but yeah, so we do head around his uh, Flogo back just so that he can use Lou, and then he literally shuffles and top decks full of gold, and it comes back to the field, so I'm just like, wow, why do I even try? But uh, he attacks for 16, we take that one helping to get a trigger, but we don't. Um, it's still fine completely, like, we can still guard this assault pretty easily. Um, but yeah, so then... Um, Then uh, he attacks with his rear guard for 19. We do use early to put two cards to the bottom. And then he attacks with Vanguard and we PG. He does check the stand trigger this time and the heal trigger, but he doesn't heal, thank goodness. And then when he attacks with his rear guard again, we go into our our, our other Erlu. We put cards back. Um, this is the perfect setup play for the GB8, uh, which now we are GB8 on pretty much our third stride. So that's pretty awesome. Um, then we use our draw trigger to time leap into Hegardo uh, because we're going to need to put some cards back for this turn. So we're using Beyond Order skill to counter boss one, soul boss one, and bind the top eight cards of our deck. So as you can see, we bind a tiger, a heal, a crit, um, a grade one, a grade three, a crit, and a crit, and another crit. Um, so we use the skill of Hegardo to, or first we decide to use Rewind Tiger to rest Hegardo so that we can get full use out of it, and then we draw a card. And then we use Hegardo to Soul Blast 1, put it to the bottom, and then put um, a heal to the bottom. And then we go into battle phase, we attack 10 to his rear guard. Uh, he lets go of his Blaster Blade, and then we attack him for 33 to Vanguard. Um, he does G guard this one uh, into Marin, and I told him that he can't use Marin skill because he's not on a blaster vanguard. He's on arc saber now, so yeah, he tries to G guard and uh, he's at 28 now. So and then he throws down a 10k to make it 38, so one to pass. Uh, he does confirm the one to pass. And then we check a heal trigger. 
Um, this is what I was talking about, like putting heals back to your deck. Like our deck's already really low because of the GB8, so doing the skill of our uh, card that puts back triggers after that just pretty much ensured that we were going to get the heal. Um, but we go into our main phase two to play cards, and then we go into our battle phase two. We attack him for 15. There's literally no way that he can survive this, uh, even if he could PG, because he can't even PG because he doesn't have a Blaster Vanguard. So we drive check two, um, and thankfully this time he doesn't six damage heal on us. So yeah, um, that was game one. Um, that was a pretty interesting matchup, especially since I had the G assist and he ran like Messiah Nick and all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty interesting indeed. But moving on to game two, we're gonna have Chrono Jet 2. Uh, looks like this time we are playing against uh, Shadow Paladin. And uh, his build looks really weird and really awkward, like I'm not gonna lie. So when I was like facing it, I saw the starter and I didn't think much of it. But then he rode a Spotted Dragon and played an AK and I was like, shook like literally internally shook i did not know what was going on um but yeah we ride duplex and we use our tiger skill to get us another card so that we can get our rush game off um we neither rush tech triggers which makes it easier to rush um he does attack our rear guard and then attack into our vanguard and we do check a heal putting power to our vanguard and then he attacks our uh unicorn we play another unicorn to replace it uh, he cut off a head, two more shall rise in his place, Hail Hydra. <laughs> so we do crit him, uh, then we attack him for 20. So we got him pretty much on the ropes, like pretty early. Um, he does ride into a grade 3, but he's running like the vanilla legion. So I'm just like, what is going on here? Uh, but then he attacks Vanguard for 17, then attacks Vanguard for 15. Uh, we do a 2 to pass. And he does not get the two to pass. And then he attacks into our Rewind Tiger, which we're fine with. Uh, we uh, go into uh, Avenir Phoenix, use the skill of Chrono Dran. And then um, I use the skill of Hegardo to put it back, and then I use the skill of uh, Duplex Dragon to buy the top one. And unfortunately, it was a zero, so I don't get to put bottom back any of his units. I do attack his rear guard for 11, and then I Avenir Phoenix to look at top five, and I call cards over that. Um, I, so I called a Unicorn and then a Stride Fighter to boost. Um, my opponent does PG and we check no triggers so uh, we attack for 11 he intercepts and then we attack with our other card and then he uh, guards with the last cards in his hand so he's not able to stride uh, I'm pretty sure he could have legion though like I'm not sure why he didn't but uh, he checks a draw trigger and a 12k attacker and then he ends his turn we stride into gear next this time like and there's just no way with this jank deck that he can survive this, so pretty easy pickings, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, so we play all three of our grade ones from our hand, which is pretty broken. Like, this is like a huge plus turn, so we use Cruising Dragon to get a free card. Um, we use our grade one to get another free card, then we attack with gear next, and we check double draw trigger. Uh, so. The pluses were hard, we're going to be hard this turn, but um, he does end up losing right there, and we take that as our game two. Oh man, I keep like moving my area to the side, like and forgetting that I have to resize it first. This is going to be quite the process to get used to you guys, but it'll be alright. Um, so we're playing against Nova Grappler for our third game. Our hand is pretty crappy actually, like we don't have a Chrono Jet. Um, however, he doesn't have a grade one, but he does crit us, which sucks. And then we also damage check a Chrono Jet, which sucks. 
but we attack the Vanguard. Um, you know, we're trying to lay as much damage as we can on them because we know that he's going to have to G assist. Uh, so he does G assist to one. So we are going to be on grade three, like while he's on grade one, which is one of my favorite things actually. Because I just feel like there's no way for your opponent to recover. Because all you have to do is throw down a 10k most of the time to no pass guard, and then you just do your thing. So we use duplex skill to bind a top card. We bound a heal, but unfortunately that heal is not a Zodiac Time Beast, so we got screwed. And this is where we flash back to my deck profile version, where I say you never really hit dupl you never really mix miss du duplex ever. Um. So yeah, he plays his grade two, attacks our rear guard, we guard it. Then he attacks our vanguard, we no guard it. Uh, we do damage check to stride fodder. Uh, then we just draw and decide to attack for nine, then nine, and then 16 to vanguard. He does no guard, and we do crit him because we are chrono, apparently. Uh, but yeah, so we're able to end the game off of just doing our rush game early. Uh, and that ends up being game three, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video that does conclude our GBT 12 Chronojet uh, ZTB list um, If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up and please subscribe if you're new like we'd love to welcome you to the Empire family um, So yeah, uh, stay tuned for the other um, Future fights that I'll be doing soon. Um, I plan to you know get on my my horse I was gonna say my high horse but that doesn't make sense uh, I plan to get in my car of productivity and drive my channel to the highway of success <laughs> so definitely uh, stay tuned guys like comment subscribe let me know in the comments what you thought down below make sure to follow us on social media through Facebook Instagram Twitter and uh, you can subscribe can also donate to us on patreon if that's your thing uh, it also allows you access to our discord um, our patreon only discord so that'd be awesome and without that being said this is jo ben josh from card fight empire and i'll see you guys on the next video bye guys